Good day, my name is Tian Guldenes and on this video I'm going to discuss something that many Christians ask the question about because they don't know what it is all about but it is from the kingdom of darkness and then they get caught up in things like this and they wonder why. And what I'm going to discuss in this little video is what is the so-called third I that many people speak about. And we're just going to look at what the Word of God says regarding idolatrous practices and what God Himself says regarding these things. And as it is always about our Lord Jesus Christ first, let us pray together first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we glorify Your name. Thank You, Lord. We know the Bible says where two or three are gathered in My name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know You're here where we're busy with this production, but You will also be there where people will be watching this video wherever they may be. And we pray that You alone will be glorified. We pray that Your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, Lord, but that Your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me. And thank You, Father, that You still give us the authority to say to Satan, we bind Your works now. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God, and You will live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that You will cover us with Your blood wherever we may be, that You will set up Your angels all around every place that we're busy with this video, and that You Yourself will be a wall of fire around about Your children according to Zechariah 2 verse 5. Thank You, Father, that we know you are with us, so please take us by the hand by your Holy Spirit now and lead us through your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now all who know me know I always start with this verse from the King James Version of the Bible, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13 that says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And again today we will read what the Bible says regarding idolatrous practices and following after other gods and how God feels about that. And you will see we will be able to read it as it is written and understand it as it is written. Because in Matthew 22 verse 29 Jesus said, Ye do err, it means you are misled, you are being deceived. Why? Not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And that is the problem with most Christians. It was my problem as well. I did not know my scriptures previously in my life until I met the Lord Jesus personally in 1999 and got baptized with His Holy Spirit. And then His Holy Spirit started revealing the scriptures to me. And then I got to know the power of God, the power of God in my marriage, in our, our relationship with our children, in our finances, but also the power of God in the war that we find ourselves in. Because, my brother and sister, we are in a spiritual war. There is one thing we must always remember. This book is the book regarding two fathers. It's the father of love, God the Father in heaven, and the father of lies, the devil, Satan, here upon the earth. It is the book regarding two kingdoms, the kingdom of light of God the Father and the kingdom of darkness of the devil. It's a book regarding two eternities, eternal glory with God the Father in heaven or eternal hell, away from God in hell. And you must choose where you want to be in all eternity. God has given us a free will. So we must understand everything in the world that does not come from God in heaven, God the Father, then you must understand it is from the devil. Anything, anything that is not from God in heaven is from the devil. And keep that in mind as we proceed with this video. We read in Jeremiah 10 verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. And if you see the word Lord like that, L-O-R-D in the capital letters in the King James Version of the Bible, in Hebrew it is written, yod Hey vav hey, because our Father's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. So thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen. In other words, do not learn the practices or the traditions of heathen nations that do not believe in the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I also have a YouTube video on God is a trinity, a triune God that you can go and watch if you would like. But He warns us not to learn the ways of the heathen. And we will see how people do that through the practices of the third eye. And in Deuteronomy 12 verse 29 to 32 we read, God says, Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, meaning after the abominations of other nations. 
and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy God. If you and I are children of God, we must be different than the world. So we don't do the same things that those nations did for their gods. For every abomination to Yahweh, which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. What things soever I command you, says God, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Now, brother and sister, if you and I are children of God, we want to be obedient to the God of the Word and the Word of God. And we will see what he says. And this is a very clear warning that we find in these verses and also in the fact that God says we must not learn the way of the heathen. So let us see what is the way of the heathen regarding the third eye. And I always give credit to the research that I've done, and I give all the links to the different uh, articles that I've used at the bottom of my slides. You can go and read it for yourself. Most of my material that I've used in this video come from the books of these people themselves who believe in the third eye. So we will see what they believe, and then we will see what God says in the Bible. The third eye, also called the mind's eye or inner eye, is an invisible eye usually depicted as located on the forehead, which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. In Hinduism, the third eye refers to the Ashna or brow chakra. In both Hinduism and Buddhism, the third eye is said to be located around the middle of the forehead, slightly above the junction of the eyebrows, representing the enlightenment one achieves through meditation. And my brother and sister, you will see that word enlightenment many times. And in the new age, who follow after many of the Hindu or the Buddhist or the Taoist religious views in the new age movement, you will hear them talk about enlightenment many times and also about receiving illumination. It is growing in the light and get receiving knowledge and all these kinds of things. Remember everything that is not from the God of the Bible is from the father of lies, Satan. Now the Britannica dictionary definition of enlightenment is the state of having knowledge or understanding, the search for spiritual enlightenment, in other words, spiritual knowledge or understanding, and the act of giving someone knowledge or understanding. But that is not godly knowledge or godly understanding or godly spiritual knowledge or understanding, but that comes from the devil. Because in Genesis 3 verse 4 to 5 we read that the serpent, the devil, said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And this is what these people from the kingdom of darkness, all the other religions, try to attain. They try to attain knowledge of good and evil by becoming gods themselves, by turning into little gods. And this is why we know this is not from the God of the Bible. Because only the Holy Spirit of God can lead us into all truth. As we read in John 16 verse 13 where Jesus says, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, that is the Holy Spirit, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. So I cannot receive enlightenment or knowledge or understanding through a third eye located in the middle of my forehead or through any other gods or idols or religious practices, my brother and sister. There is only one way as a child of God that I can receive knowledge of all truth and that is under the leading of the Holy Spirit of God who comes to live in me when I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and King and Redeemer. Especially in Eastern spiritual practices and philosophies. Again now, look at the spiritual practices and philosophies. In other words, it is not from the God of the Bible. Then it is from the Father of Lies. The third eye refers to the gate 
that leads to the inner realms and spaces of higher consciousness and often symbolizes a state of enlightenment. And there we have it again. You see, in this whole thing regarding receiving enlightenment or becoming illuminated is because they all follow after the one called Lucifer. The word Lucifer is actually not found in the Bible, but the Hebrew word Hillel means also the illuminated one, the one carrying the light, which is then now Lucifer, who is also known as the morning star. He is the forgery of what Jesus Christ brought for us, because remember, Satan does everything to the opposite that God gives us and wants to give us. So enlightenment or receiving illumination means following after the illuminated one, and that is not Jesus Christ of the Bible. So the third eye is often associated with religious visions, clairvoyance, the ability to observe chakras and auras, precognition, and out-of-body experiences. So all these things you can see does not come from the Word of God. And we must understand there is a warning in Colossians 2 verse 8 that says, Beware, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You see, if I follow after these Eastern practices and philosophies and religions, I'm busy with vain deceit because it's all about me now. I want to become like a god. I want to become a little god. And it's after the tradition of men. You see, it's after the traditions of the Hindus, of the Buddhists, of the Taoists, and other uh, movements like the New Age. So I'm following after the tradition of men. And God says here, through the mouth of Paul, beware. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Now here is a picture of how they believe a human being has seven chakras, from the one at the bottom up to the top chakra in the, in the head when they receive illumination when they get to that part. So the word chakra means spinning wheel. Yoga maintains that chakras are center points of energy, thoughts, feelings, and the physical body. According to yogic teachers, I also have a whole video on is yoga safe for Christians that you can go and watch if you would like. But according to yogic teachers, chakras determine how people experience reality through emotional reactions, des desires or aversions, levels of confidence or fear, and even physical symptoms and effects. Now, my Bible says God leads us through His Holy Spirit to understand how the enemy attacks us, because again, in the Bible we find two kingdoms, kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, and we need to know how these kinds of attacks come from the kingdom of darkness against the children of God, and how we can resist them according to the word of God by the power of Jesus Christ. It is not through the working of our chakras. When energy becomes blocked in a chakra, they believe, it triggers physical, mental or emotional imbalances that manifest in symptoms such as anxiety, lethargy or poor digestion. And that is the way they believe these chakras work. In Hinduism, the third eye refers to the Ajna or Brow Chakra, said to be located around the middle of the forehead, slightly above the junction of the eyebrows. Hindus place a Tilaka between the eyebrows as a representation of the third eye, that red little dot that they usually put above their eyebrows, as you see in the pictures that I have here as well. So Hindus place a tilaka between the eyebrows as a representation of the third eye, which is also seen on expressions of Shiva, who is one of the gods of the Hindus. He is referred to as that name, or the three-eyed lord, where his third eye symbolizes, now look at that again, the power of knowledge. Again, that knowledge is not godly knowledge, not knowledge regarding the God of the Bible, but the kingdom of darkness. So it represents, it symbolizes the power of knowledge and the detection of evil, they say, but it comes from evil. His eye is depicted by three horizontal lines in the middle of his forehead. And so you see these different little spots that Hindu people put upon their foreheads. And we read that the application of tilak, it's that little red dot or whatever color they make it, it's a significant tradition in Hindu culture. 
symbolizing a spiritual connection. Again, there you see it. Spiritual connection. Spiritual connection to what? Not to the God of the Bible, my brother and sister. A spiritual connection and awakening of consciousness. It serves as a mark of devotion, cultural adherence and protection against negative energies. The moment you hear all these words, energies, 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 you must understand it comes from the kingdom of darkness and it is also a very, very popular new age term. Additionally, Tilak is a unique identifier of religious sects and communities. So they have different ways of putting it upon their foreheads with different colors or stripes or whatever. This ritual, beyond its cultural and religious dimensions, is believed to enhance concentration and focus, making it a powerful symbol that deepens one's connection to the divine and the world. And they make it sound so good. But in Buddhism now, let's look what happens in Buddhism. Now there you have different depictions of Buddha and you can buy these statues all over, these little statuettes of Buddha. Now in Buddhism, and many people have these in their homes as well, in Buddhism the third eye is said to be located around the middle of the forehead, slightly above the junction of the eyebrows. Buddhists regard the third eye as the eye of consciousness, representing the vantage point from which enlightenment, there it comes again, beyond one's physical sight is achieved, and use an urna, now they call it an urna, the Hindus call it a tilak, and they use an urna to the same effect as Hindus. The third eye, or the eye of wisdom, is discerned on the deity Buddha, the this little God that they call Buddha. So, my brother and sister, if you have any of these things in your house, in any case, it's not acceptable. I also have five different YouTube videos on spiritual house cleaning that you can watch why the Bible says we may not have any of these things in our homes. Now, does a third eye really exist? This author writes, the concept of a third eye is not based on scientific evidence, but one that has existed, look at this now, that has existed throughout history in spiritual and religious traditions such as Taoism, Buddhism and Hinduism and is believed to tie to a person's intuition. The third eye is believed to be an energy center located between your eyebrows. It can be opened by activating the pineal gland through techniques like yoga and meditation. And that's not the meditation that the Word of God speaks about, my brother and sister. In Eastern philosophies and Eastern religions, they believe when you meditate, you must clear your mind of anything. And then you are susceptible to thoughts being put into your mind from the outside. No, the Bible says when you meditate, you meditate upon the word of God. It is a popular concept in religions like Hinduism and Taoism, as we've seen. And the Bible says in Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. God will not share you as his child with the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because he's a jealous God. We see that in Exodus 34 verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So you, my brother and sister, if you're married, obviously you do not share your husband or your wife with other men or women. Why? Because you love your husband or your wife. You're jealous of your husband or wife, but that is a love jealous. It is not the green monster jealousy. It is stemming from love. It's the same with God. He is a jealous God because he bought us by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. So how can we then as Christians go to places to say, but I want my third eye to be opened and I'm, I'm just doing this for the fun and all the, no, don't even do it for the fun because Satan will bind you through that fun. God does not share his glory with anybody else. He is the only one that will teach us all truth through his Holy Spirit and in, according to the word of God. This person proceeds to write, you can explore the third eye chakra's role by opening it. Through the activation of the third eye, you can tap into a deep sense of inner wisdom and connect with the divine energy that flows through all things. Now, in other videos, I also discuss this divine energy. It is called Ki or Chi, either in Japanese or in Chinese, which is this inner divine force which is an inner life force that they believe that is in you. And that is not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. But 
all this, you can connect with the divine energy that flows through all things, says Raquel Rodriguez, an astrologer and founder of your zodiac. Remember, astronomy is the study of the stars that God put in the heaven. Astrology is the occult practice of being bound through things in the heavens by using the stars and the sun and the moon to worship the sun and the moon and the stars. That's the difference between astronomy and astrology. So this can lead to a profound sense of spiritual connection and the greater understanding of your place in the universe. You see, these people say you must open your third eye to get this deeper spiritual connection and a greater understanding of your place in the universe. Well, my Bible is very clear what our place in the universe is if I'm a child of God. And we find it in Ephesians 2 verse 4 to 6, which says, But God, who is rich in mercy... For His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My brother and sister, that is my place in the universe. I sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because as a child of God, I live no more, yet Christ lives within me. I in Him and He in me. What a wonderful place to be. I don't need my third eye to be opened to understand who I am and where I am in the universe. But this person proceeds to say, you can activate the third eye through the pineal gland. According to Rodriguez, the third eye opens when the pineal gland is activated. The pineal gland sits near the brain center, regulates your sleep cycle and produces melatonin. Holistic practitioners, that is new age practitioners, believe that when the pineal gland is activated, it can lead to a heightened sense of intuition, clarity of thought, and an increased awareness of one's surroundings. That sounds so good. It sounds so right. And it is so not from the God of the Bible, my brother and sister. So look at these things now. Look at what they now say from their own writings. This is not written by any Christians. These were written by their own authors believing in these things. Opening the third eye can be a life-changing experience for many people. This act of awakening the pineal gland can lead to an expansion of synchronicity to consciousness, psychic abilities, now psychic abilities means paranormal abilities, and heightened awareness. However, it is important to note that there is a huge risk associated with this process. They say it themselves. That is not even taking into consideration the risk that I'm telling you as a child of God that you can never participate in because the enemy will use this to try and pull you away from God. The opening of the third eye can also lead to a range of short-term and long-term side effects and dangers that should be considered before attempting to open it, exposing yourself to overwhelming sensory input. Many people have reported a heightened sense of sensitivity to lights, sounds and other forms of stimuli. This can lead to feelings of disorientation, confusion and even anxiety, that is fear. Another short-term side effect is the possible onset of headaches or migraines. This can occur due to increased activity and the subsequent release of brain chemicals. Now, my brother and sister, do you really believe that the God of the Bible would do these kinds of things to you when he wants you to grow spiritually and get closer to him? No, he doesn't do these kinds of things, but the enemy does. Because 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There we have now seen from their own material that there is confusion in the minds of these people in many instances. That is one of the dangers of having the third eye opened. Third eye awakening, how to know if your third eye is open. Many people often mistakenly think that they need to work on getting their third eye to open when in fact it already is. Now is that possible? Because there may be families who had mediums or spiritists in their bloodline. And I also have a whole video on bloodline or generational curses where a grandmother or a grandfather may have been into these kinds of things. It could have been transferred to the children or the the grandchildren and their third eye may also be open already because of the things coming in the bloodline. 
This is largely because fear and uncertainty can prompt us to ignore what we take in with the third eye. This is now what they believe. We are often raised to discount our hunches. So how do you know if yours is open? The easiest way to answer this question is to pay attention to whether you have gut feelings, even ones that you suppress. The more seemingly baseless intuitions you have, the more likely it is that your third eye is currently open, whether you want it to be or not. And my brother and sister, as Christians, we need to take note of what they're saying here. It is possible that your third eye can also be open because of things that happened in the past or things that you dabbled in yourself. You may have dabbled in some of the fun, occult stuff at school or after school with your friends and going to people, reading your palms, etc. Opening the door for the devil to start to come into your life or it might be in your bloodline and then you don't understand what's going on. But we need to ask the Lord to close that third eye. It's by way of a prayer. It's not very difficult, but you need to get to somebody to pray with you to get that eye closed again. But we must understand there is always a true product in the Bible, and then there is the forgery that the enemy brings. The true product in the Bible regarding discerning things happening around us in the spiritual, we find in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 11, that speaks about the nine different gifts of the Holy Spirit, of which one is the gift of discerning of spirits. And we understand, verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So yes, the true product is that the Holy Spirit of God that starts to flow through you can start to let you discern things that are wrong or are right in certain instances, situations, persons, uh, buildings that you walk into, whatever. But that is the gift of discernment of spirits. That's the true product in the Bible. That is not the forgery. Now the forgery is the open third eye that the enemy brings in. And then you think that your spiritual heightened senses, oh, that is from this inner being, this inner divine being within me. No, no, understand one thing. You must seek after the true product of the Bible if you're a child of God, not after the forgery of the devil. Now, here are some possible Ashna chakra opening symptoms that could occur from opening the third eye chakra. Increased psychic abilities, again, paranormal abilities. Heightened sense of awareness and perception. Vivid dreams or increased lucid dreaming. Headaches or pressure in the forehead and brow area. Increased sensitivity to light and sound. More connected to the universe or a higher power. And again, that's not the God of the Bible. Increased creativity and imagination. Enhanced ability to focus and concentrate. Increased sense of empathy and compassion. Heightened spiritual experiences or a sense of spiritual awakening. Remember one thing, my brother and sister. All spiritual experiences are not from the God of the Bible. Because the Word of God tells us in these end times that we find ourselves in that the false prophets and the false Christs will do great signs and wonders. So the devil can also give you spiritual experiences and a sense of spiritual awakening. So you need to know your scriptures and you need to ask for the God of the Bible to give you the gift of discernment of spirits coming from his Holy Spirit so that you can discern which one is trying to get into your life or trying to bind you, either the forgery that tries to bind you or the true product of God of the Holy Spirit that tries to let you grow in the Spirit. But these people say, it is important to note that not everyone experiences physical symptoms of third eye opening and it is not necessary to experience all of the symptoms listed above in order to have a successful experience. Beware that you don't run after spiritual experiences and supernatural experiences because they can also be from the devil. You need to know your scriptures, my brother and sister. And we read in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he devours people through the open third eye as well. And why do people not discern this? Because 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 to 15 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You see, my brother and sister, they let you think that these supernatural experiences you have come from God, while it's from the devil. So don't fall for these supernatural experiences experiences and think it's only from God that all supernatural experiences only come from God no don't be pulled into anybody telling you let's open your third eye I even had Christians saying to me but you know we pray to God to open my third eye there is no such thing God is not divided against himself God does not share his glory with anybody else we saw earlier so God will not let you open your third eye what he will do is if you're in a personal intimate relationship with him through his Holy Spirit working in and through you yes he will give you the gift of discernment of spirits so that you can discern what is happening around you or in any specific situation now side effects of third eye opening include the following all of which can be effectively managed with careful planning they say so they think you can manage these kind of things my brother and sister the only way to be set free from these things is to be a child of God according to the word of God, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ in your life as your only Lord and Savior, and then living according to the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit and resisting the demon spirits bringing these things into your life. Now look at this at what they say, what, what some of these side effects are. Number one, vivid dreams and nightmares. Number two, scary, accurate intuition. Number three, you may become fearless. Number four, astral projection. That is demonic, my brother and sister. That is occult. All these things are occult. Number five, your eye chakra could become overactive. Number six, third eye awakening can be confusing and scary. Number seven, chaotic behavior. Do you think any of these things come from the God of the Bible? Most definitely not, because 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So any kind of mind confusion and confusion in the way people behave and chaotic behavior, it's not from the God of the Bible. Now they proceed to say to their people, Should I open my third eye chakra? The advantages according to them are, expanded spiritual awareness and again my brother and sister please as a child of God remember the spiritual awareness that they speak about here is not spiritual awareness regarding the God of the Bible a greater understanding of oneself and the universe and we've already seen what the Bible says regarding who we are in Christ ability to access deeper levels of meditation and consciousness and then a heightened creativity and imagination and to people who do not know the God of the Bible, these things sound so right. And it sounds like things that we should strive after, but it is not according to the word of God. But these are the advantages, they say. The disadvantages, according to their own authors, are intense and potentially disturbing visions or experiences. Difficulty separating reality from imagination. Increased sensitivity to light and sound. And look at the last one now. Possible negative impact on mental health. My brother and sister, how can you even try to let yourself be pulled into things like that? All you need to do is come to the God of the Bible and he will set you free and he will lead you and pull you closer to him and lead you to grow spiritually and become more and more like Jesus Christ himself. He is the only way, the truth and the life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But you see the books that they also, there are many books regarding these things out there. There you see some of the books that I saw on the internet. But it's interesting to note the third one on the right hand side, the third eye there. That is a symbol that's very well known also in Freemasonry. And I also have a YouTube video on are Freemasons really free? So we know that it's also known as the eye of Horus, which is the one all seeing eye of Lucifer. So again, just another confirmation. Everything that is not from the God of the Bible is from the kingdom of darkness. And so we must understand, if you and I are children of God, then we have laid down our lives. And Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So my brother and sister, if Christ lives in me, 
His head is in my head. His eyes are in my eyes. His mouth is in my mouth. It is a life-size Christ within me. So he will not allow the enemy to put a third eye or to open the third eye in my life. If I live no more, yet Christ lives within me. But we must understand that if we have participated in any of these things or any of our ancestors have, we need to confess it before God. And the Bible is very clear regarding this in 1 John 1 verse 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That includes having dabbled in these kind of occult practices. And if you may say to me, but Tian, yes, I really was ignorant regarding this. I did not know this. Family or friends pulled me into this and we did it for the fun. Well, praise the Lord for a graceful God. Because he says in Acts 17 verse 30, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So if you may have been ignorant regarding the third eye and what it means today that ignorance that you may have had if you confess it before God he forgives you and he winks at your ignorance but now he commands all men everywhere to repent in other words not to do this any longer because there is a very dire warning in Hebrews 10 verse 26 and 27 that says for for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth in other words the truth regarding to the word of God there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. My brother and sister, on this little video I've given you knowledge. The knowledge of the word of God regarding what God says concerning idols and idolatrous practices upon the earth. Now you have new godly knowledge and understanding and you must still decide are you going to follow after the world and the rudiments of the world and the traditions of the world and the way they do things or are you going to follow after the word of God and the God of the word because eternity waits for us all and we must be in a personal intimate relationship with him with God the Father in heaven with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit if we want to be in eternity with them and not away from them what are you going to choose because you can choose between life and death and we do not serve as christians as children of god we do not serve a dead god because jesus says in the revelation 1 verse 17 and 18 i'm the first and the last i'm he that liveth and was dead and behold i'm alive forevermore amen and all honor and glory goes to jesus christ of nazareth so let us pray together Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, that there is no other God but you, that you are the one true God of all eternity, the creator of heaven and earth, who has made eternity possible for us through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, thank you that we may be in a personal, intimate relationship with you. Thank you that we may know that you are the only way, the truth, and the life. And I pray that people who have watched this video will be touched by your Holy Spirit. And if they have participated in these things, that they will be set free from the bondages of the devil regarding these practices as well. And Lord Jesus, we know your coming is very close at hand. So we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Because the Spirit and the Bride say come. For we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you